Hello, this is Brewer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for Football Manager 2024. As we continue our road to glory run with Farsley Celtic now in the Skybet Championship. We are one league away from the Premier League, guys. And we've got, we, we got a pretty rough team, and we have no budgets. The board did not give us any additional budgets just because we made it to the championship. I'm hoping that will change soon, but it hasn't changed yet. But let's go ahead and get into the season review, and we'll get into the transfers, and we'll do what we can. Let's get into it. All right, end of season review for the 2028-2029 season. The new arrivals. Who Do we think Mateus... I didn't look yet. Do we think Mateus got signing of the season? I think he did. If, if Carter gets it, I guess that wouldn't be too big of a stretch. My guess is Mateus. Oh, it's Peters. Okay, okay. Mateus has got to be up there, though. A plus, of course. I mean, Carter did did well. That was a good signing as well. McDonald, obviously a great signing. Chukwuma, I forget we got Chukwuma in this year. Was he on loan before and we just got him on permanent, maybe? Um, Talbot played pretty well. Abufani, I mean, yeah, Munz. Munz was a good pickup. Newfield, eh, Josh. I mean, we actually had a lot of people come in that I was expecting. Chai Holder, of course. Jack Baldwin, Edmondson, Bartlow. Bartlow wasn't good. He was miserable all season, and we just couldn't do anything with him. Matt Jordan, good pickup as well. Uh, he didn't play much, but, you know, it is what it is. We probably should have sent him out on loan, come to think of it. Uh, transfers out. Let's see, Green. Anything that was just atrociously bad. Oluwabori out. Gajda, Rye, Davey, Finley Heath. None of these were really, like, that amazing. But, and then Garber went out on loan. He he did well, although I don't know that he's improved that much. He really hasn't. And Ojungu went out on loan for a while, and then we brought him back because we weren't sure if we were going to need him. Um... Season results, obviously, getting promotion, having to run the gauntlet through the playoffs. Great stuff there. Well deserved, honestly, because we were we were one of the two best teams in the league. If you look at XG, now again, I get the XG. It's kind of a it's a it's a rating. It's not official. Nothing. I mean, the scoreboard's what's official, but we we kind of felt like we were definitely doing better than what the scoreboard was telling us. And if you look at pure goal differential, the three teams with the top goal differential made it through, and I think that's fair. So even though our points we're not very high. I think we were a really, really solid, really strong team. Um, FA Cup, we did really well in the FA Cup. We got past three champ or League Two teams, or no, sorry, championship teams, I should say. Uh, Rotherham, uh, actually, all three of these, right? Bolton as well, yeah. Rotherham, Bolton, and um, and Cardiff. Oh, sorry, we played Cardiff City. We almost got past them. We we took them to a draw. And we should have got. We deserved to win that one as well, but it is what it is. Uh, we did lose up against Myrtlesboro which was also a championship team, uh, third in the championship, to be fair, um, in the Carabao Cup. And then Bristol Street, we, of course, won that one. I think we, didn't we beat a, did we beat a championship team here too? No, we didn't. Maybe not. I guess not. But uh, we did well. We did well. So good stuff there. Uh, moments to remember. Uh, biggest win was against Stockport. Match to remember was against Lincoln. Goal of the season came against Burton from Abu Fani. This was uh, in February, February 28th, actually. Uh, let's go watch this go, I guess. All right, four goals in this game, but we'll watch all four of them. Not sure if I remember this Abelfani goal. Peters with the ball over to... And Carter gets that one. That was good. That was one of... That was that stretch of games where Carter was scoring a goal every game. Then he got a little bit quiet after that. Peters, okay. Good call from there. Oh, Augusta. That's one of his one of his goals. That was so good. All right, here we go. Oh, Abafani just gets a free kick. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. So good stuff there. Finances. I mean, reputation stayed the same at the moment. Uh, we did get a you know doubled our sponsorship money, decent chunk more re broadcast revenue, uh, doubled our corporate and hospitality, less competition prize money, which feels weird. Because we made it further in the FA Cup. Eh, whatever. And then Match Day Commercial we did almost double that as well. Abu Fani was the top shirt seller. Wow. And then Bennett Jones, Barlow, really? And Peters. That one's kind of kind of weird, <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, here's how we lined up. Of course, the Conquo and Go. Chukwuma on the left. Okay. Because that's just probably because, what's his name? Uh, um, Mateus did not get in here um, as early. McDonald on the right. That makes sense. Mons and Abufani really over uh, overholder. I guess that's fair. No, I guess that's fair. Davis and Lloyd in the center back roles. I, I agree with that. 
Peters on that left wing, for sure. Talbot on the right wing. Yeah, okay. And Jones and Bennett up front. All right. And we did lose Connolly halfway through the season, so would have been nice to keep him. Did get manager of the season, or manager of the month, two, two uh, months in a row, or not in a row, but two months. Oh, yeah, it was in a row. Yeah, October, November. Th those are in a row, guys. <laughs> uh, player of the season was James Jones. Played well. Young player of the season, James Jones. Signing the season, Peters, we saw that. Goal of the season, we fought Fanny. Uh, Bennett had 25 goals over the course of the season. 24 assists from Peters. Oh my goodness. Most player of the match awards was Jones. Highest average rating was Jones. And Lloyd had the most passes completed. Competition awards, nobody. And then most goals by a player in a match was Jones. I mean, I guess we haven't had anybody score more than a hat trick. And then most assists by a player in the season, Peters. Good stuff there. Uh, hard work and effort paid off on the pitch. And such a feat didn't go and rewarded at our end of season reward ceremony. Barsley flew out of the traps and set themselves up for the most magical of promotions. We had a great, great promotion. And we won a trophy. Good stuff. No office for Bartlow. We're trying to get rid of him. Really, at this point, we're trying to get rid of him for anything. We're just going to say unspecified. Just, just go. <laughs> like He doesn't want to be here. We don't want him here. Just go. Wait, did we get any new budgets? Still no budgets? All right, players are directed to the overall best 11. Uh, Lloyd made it in straight into the starting lineup. That makes perfect sense to me. Uh, Bennett is in here. He's on the bench. Billows is in here on that right-hand side. Okay, okay. I mean, McDonald obviously should be in here at some point. Peter's on that uh, in there on the bench as well. I think he'll take over for Stevenson pretty quickly. And that was it. Best 11, where are they now? Connolly, of course, currently playing for Norwich. Polo Board playing for Port Vale. I mean, Connolly's the one that's made the furthest, obviously. He's in the Premier League right now, right? Yep, of course he is. Um, Lock Green. Attempt to avoid relegation. I mean, we're going to do our best. Sell players before buying. I mean, I'm with you there. We are struggling working with a wage budget because you won't give me a wage budget. Ah, so frustrating. End of season team meeting. I mean, we're going to attempt to avoid relegation is what we're going to do. Yeah, bring in some new faces. That's, that's good. Nothing else to talk about right now, to be honest. That's good. That's a good. We'll take the positive. Um, we had a lot of injuries, too. Man, got to figure that out as well. We do have a new... We got a technical director. No, we already have a technical director. We just finally get to pay for him, apparently, in a recruitment analyst. Uh, Holder linked with a switch. I don't know if that's going to happen. Or not. Although Holder did start to struggle there at the end. If we can get some money for him, we shall see. I mean, oh, this has been... It's been hard kind of keeping some of this together, but... I mean, guys down here at the bottom, Matt Jordan, I really feel like Matt Jordan could do better. I kind of just want to keep holding on to him. He just didn't play much, and I probably should have sent him out on Lone Star, but I thought I thought we'd get him in rotated more than we did. Um, Powell probably needs to move on. I can't imagine Powell's going to be able to stick around. Bartlow definitely needs to move on. Edmondson. I mean, if we get anything for Edmondson, I'd probably move him on as well. we got to get some money for some people. Yeah, something like that. Somewhere pretty much down here. These guys down here, if we can get any money for any of these guys... We've just got to try and sell them on, and we got to get some money coming in just so we can turn that around and get something going, going the other direction. I still can't believe we have no budgets. That is absurd to me. After after getting the promotion, like the official promotion, we did not get any new budgets at all. Presumably, we're going to have to increase our stadium size as well, right? Like, that would have to imagine that we can't we can't match up in this next league with the stadium size the way we are. Can we go up? Let's go look at the rules. Minimum seating capacity 5,000. We actually have a big enough stadium for that. Wow. Minimum seating is 2,000. And terracing is... No, our stadium is actually big enough. <laughs> that is absurd. Uh, let's go look at the championship. Actually, let's go look at... Uh, what do I want to look at? Stats detailed. Uh, if we go look at the... Um, uh, sorry, salaries are right. 
I mean, Bolton's down here at 7.76. We're at two, we're, we're under two mil right now. So we are microscopic compared to these guys up here, obviously at the top, but we need at least 10 mil to at least be potentially fighting for, you know, against relegation, right? Like we've got at least be down here with some of these guys and we're not even down here with these guys at the moment. So I think without finances, we come right back down guys. I just can't imagine how I could put together a good enough team, but with youngsters, it's always possible. It's always possible with youngsters. All right, I'm gonna go do some business. I'm gonna do some some transfer stuff. Um, I will go ahead and show you the guys that we've we've already got coming in. Some of these guys look pretty good, so we'll look at the guys coming in. We got uh, Robbie Wright as a striker. Um, not great finishing, six foot one though. Decent physicals. Um, currently two star ability could be as high as five star. So just another guy that we can bring in. Maybe he gets good. Maybe he's not. It's not costing us a lot. Uh, Romanus here is a uh, current midfielder. We're gonna have to retrain him as a defensive midfielder. Unless we change our formation. Uh, only one star current ability, maybe two star, uh, up to five star potential. So we'll see what he can do for us as well. He's very short, five foot three, but we'll see if that maybe that'll be okay. Jackson Taylor can play up and down that left hand side, which is really nice to see. That means he, as a left back, he'll be able to attack pretty nicely. Currently, yeah, one and a half star current that we know about, three and a half star potential that we know about, could be as high as five star, of course. Um, we'll see what he can do for him. And Kenyon comes in here as a center back. Uh, current, uh, where is he down here? Current one and a half star that we know about three and a half star potential could be as high as five star six foot four, uh, 14 jumping reach. Not bad. 11 heading. I mean, he's, he's okay. 18 years of age. Uh, he comes in here from Chelsea or sorry. He comes in from Liverpool. Taylor's from Chelsea. Romanus is from West Ham and Wright's from Tottenham. And the last one from Crystal Palace is Lee Marshall as a right back. Uh, he comes in here. None of these guys are going to come in right away and start, but they have the potential to do something. So. Unlike some of the guys we've had in the past where they were able to come right in and start right away, uh, we do have slightly better players in some of these spots for these guys currently. Uh, but that's where it is. Uh, we did sell Finley Heath for a little bit of money, 3.9K. I mean, we weren't doing a lot with him, so at least we got some money for him, but uh, it is what it is. And like I said, I'll bring you guys back once we've done some business. Well, <laughs> that was probably one of the worst transfer windows I have ever been a part of. That was a nightmare. Um... We never got more money. Um, I I almost maybe not maybe not a bug, but just a, a quirkiness with Football Manager that we got our budgets while we were still in League One before we'd gotten promotion, and then when we got promotion, the budgets didn't change, which makes no sense whatsoever. They should give us more money, obviously, for being in the next level up, especially since the budgets they gave us in League One were barely any more than the budgets that we had in League One. The year before so there's no logical reason why we didn't get more money um at all it just made no sense so here's how things went down um not good <laughs> not good at all uh we got hit up down left and right with all sorts of just negatives bad things it was just a nightmare um we did uh, i think we showed you we sold finley heath just got a little bit of money for him we sold josh lewis got almost 50k for him showed edmonds sold edmondson got 160k for him and we sold josh power got about 54k for him um, problem is none of that money went to us. Zero dollars of that went to the transfer. Cause we had, I think we got, we got to keep 5%. So I guess, I, I guess zero dollars is inaccurate. We got to keep 5% of that, which was like a couple thousand bucks. The rest of it went into the bank account. Um, and then we did let Garber go on a free. So all that was out done, whatever. Um, so it was very disappointing to lose these guys and not get to keep that money at all. And after after selling all these guys, I made sure I waited until I sold these guys so that we had the biggest bank account possible. I asked for increased transfer revenue and increased wage budget. Um, or I, I should say, I thought I asked for increased transfer revenue and increased, uh, I should say increased, yeah, increased transfer uh, budget and increased wage budget. I thought I asked for those two things. What I actually apparently asked for was... Um, Increased percentage that we got to keep, which helped us no more because we weren't selling anybody else, and increased next year's transfer budget. So next year's budget is a guaranteed million dollars, believe it or not. <laughs> if we go look over here, next year's budget is a guaranteed 1.13 million bucks, which is insane, considering we had $50,000 to start this transfer budget. So at least next year will be good if we can make it there. Uh, as you can see, we are way over budget and our budget budget is a little bit higher than it was when we left, but there's a reason for that. And we'll get back into that in just a second. Let me go back to the transfers for a second and I'll show you what we got. Uh, 
Problem, one of the other problems things that they hit us really hard, unfortunately, was... Oh, wait, where'd it go? There we go. Uh, one of the other things that hit us really hard was that all five of these these youngsters that we brought in, we've done really good with bringing in youngsters from the Premier League teams, and that's where we got some of our best players, right? This time it was a bit of a flop, right? Wait a minute. What? Give me a second. What? Okay. A few minutes ago when I was checking this, admittedly, I say a few minutes ago, probably about an hour or two ago, before, at the beginning of the transfer window, as soon as these guys joined the team, I checked their potential because I was like, okay, we'll get to see their potential for real. Every single one of these guys' potential was capped at three stars. Three stars, no higher. No white stars, no yellow stars, nothing past three stars. And you know, it's like, you gotta be kidding me. I got all these guys in and they're two stars up front and the best they're going to do is three stars. Um, something changed and they're all at least, you know, they all potentially still have four and a half to five stars. So never mind. Maybe our youngsters will work out after all. I was kind of like, what is going on? I've never lucked out this badly on youngsters. No idea. Well, you guys can see that there is guys are actually might be okay after all. Anyway, here's the guys we brought in and, and, we're going to talk about Dion Montgomery here in a minute. Yeah, we'll talk about Dion Montgomery here in a minute. So we brought in Talbot. We went ahead and brought him in on a uh, full-time, mostly because he's very flexible. The guy can play all over the place. If we ever decide to play center, central midfielder, we can play striker, whatever. He can play all over the place. We know he can play pretty well. He did decently for us. And so we brought him in, parried barely anything for him. 4.3K. That's nothing, right? That was fine. I was like, whatever. That's basically a sign-on bonus, whatever. Uh, we then brought in this guy, Ed McGinty from Oxford United. He comes in here as a three-star, just solid 29-year-old backup goalkeeper. So at least if Okonkwo gets uh, hurt again, we have a backup. Jane Heskey comes in here as a striker, two-and-a-half-star current ability, potentially getting as high as three-and-a-half-star. It's not amazing, but he's at least a little bit better uh, just to start off with with some of the other some of those youngsters that we brought in, right? He doesn't have the potential that some of the youngsters have, maybe, especially at 23 years of age, but he's got the current ability to maybe match them. So we brought him in, paid, you know, got him in on a free... Paid a little bit on his salary, nothing big deal. Caleb Taylor comes in here, central center back. Same kind of a story. Current ability is a little bit higher than some of those youngsters. Potential is not very high. He's at least going to be able to fill in a role until some of those youngsters can kind of develop out a little bit more, and I think that's going to be good for us. So we brought him in here on a free from Chorley. Again, we're going to come back to Dion Montgomery in just a second. Terry Rowe comes in here on a free. Two-star current ability. This is another youngster that could get as high as four and a half stars. Maybe. You never know. Uh, so he comes in here as a right winger. Could technically play striker. Could also play center. Uh tag midfielder in the center if we like so we'll see where he does for him he comes in here from nowhere he's a complete free transfer jb andrews comes in here as a free transfer as 18 year old uh two star current ability could be as high as five star we don't know i uh, can play striker can play midfielder can play defensive midfielder can play on the left this dude's flex he can technically be trained as a right back this dude's flexibility is incredible he might not turn into anything good but his flexibility is amazing so if we can get him to develop at all that would this guy's gonna be an awesome player just to have just to have as a backup. Um uh Richard Collier Collier uh comes in here, two star current ability, could be as high as four star, so maybe not amazing. 20 year old can play on the left, can play on the right, see what we can do. Decent, decent guy again on a free. Ben Mitchell comes in here on a free, two star current ability, four and a half star potential ability, can play on the left, can play on the striker, play midfield, could probably be trained as a defensive midfielder if we absolutely need him, but we're probably gonna play him as a left winger uh more often than not. Uh, and he's got great hair. I mean, hair that's so big it doesn't even fit in the picture. So he comes in here again, cheap, cheap guy. We don't know how good he's going to get. We'll see. Uh, we then brought in four loanies. Just brought in four loanies, almost blind, I'll be honest. But it's the only four loanies I could get on any reasonable amount of price. First up, Janelle Thomas comes in here as a three, two and a half star current ability. Could be as high as five star center back. Looks okay. I mean, he's a center back that. He, he exists, right? <laughs> I guess beggars can't be choosers. Sam Bruno comes in here as a right winger. Uh, Three-star current ability could be as high as four and a half stars. So looks pretty solid actually there. Good to see that. Uh, Nifonku uh, comes in here as a left winger. Two and a half star current ability could be as high as three and a half as he develops. Again, we probably won't see a lot of his development as a loney, but again, another player that fills a spot. And then finally, Call of Forty, two and a half star, could go as high as four star center back. Again, a lot of this was just to get us depth, let us get us something. Because before I did, before I got these free guys and these four, I thought all my youngsters were only going to cap out at three stars. So I didn't even think they were going to be worth bringing into the, the the top team. And we had like 14 people in the team. 
14 to 15 people on the team. That was it. It was so bad. And finally, we got all these free guys. We got all these guys. I was able to bring the youngsters up from the unders. Um, so obviously, the squad filled out a bit more after all of this. So not great. Nobody just amazing. We will look at Dale Montgomery, though. So the story about Dale Montgomery. Dale Montgomery was a free free transfer. But he's one of those free transfers that because of his age, we have to pay his parents club X amount of money. I was like, okay, $150,000 is a lot of money to pay for this guy. But this guy is really good. He's as good as John Lloyd. He's better than Munns. He's better than Chai Holder. This guy is really good. This guy is really going to be able to anchor that defensive midfield. And he's going to look really, really solid for us. I went ahead and went through with the offer. And I was like, if, if it doesn't look like it's going to work out, we'll just cancel it. No big deal. I got the message that said next year's transfer budgets increased by 1.1 mil. Well, we hadn't actually rolled over to next year, I thought, but I guess we had. So I thought it was counting for this, like the, like the, the coming up year was increased to 1.1 mil. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. 1.1 mil. That's amazing. Yeah. We'll spend 150 K on this four star current ability. could be as high as five star 21 year old. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. We'll spend 155 K. Then come to find out I misread it or misunderstood it. And it was next year, next year's <laughs> uh, transfer budget. So his 155K drained our wage budget completely. We went from a 39,000 to 36,000 available wage budget bringing this guy on. Oh, it hurt so bad because we had we couldn't get anybody. We had a striker, a four-star striker. He was only going to cost us $6,000, but we couldn't bring anything over it. We, that's all. That was all he's going to take out of our out of our transfer budget, 6,000 bucks. And his wage budget was fine. He was like two grand, maybe. So it was not that bad. We couldn't even find six grand for this guy. And I was so devastated to lose him. It was so, so sad. So then you're going to ask yourself, where, where did we get all this money? We had to tank. We had, we had, we had to tank the, uh, the dynamics a bit. Club atmosphere is just average. And that's not just because Chai Holder wants to leave. It's because I had to, uh, Drop the collective win bonuses for both the league and the cups, which I really hate to do. But that was the only way I could get any money to make sure that I could sign all those loanies, to make sure I could sign anybody, right? And we had three guys that I wanted to give new offers to. Chukwuma, um, uh, where is he? Okonkwo, and McDonnell. Three guys that are very important to our future. I wanted to give those three guys new contracts because their contracts are expiring very soon. I mean, we still had another year, but, you know, the sooner we get those done, the better. So we went ahead and re-signed those. A a that was after the um, the uh, um, collective win bonuses. I, I lowered the collective win bonuses. After that happened, we got everybody else in. We still had a little bit of money, so I was like, okay, I can go ahead and renew these guys' contracts. All is good. So that's why we got as much money as we did, because I had to tank that just to get some money to get those loanies and those other guys in. And then once we had did that, we had a tiny bit more money left over, and I was able to at least re-sign those guys. We're still technically every wage budget. I'm sure the board's not happy with that. It's their fault, if you ask me, for um, for just messing up my wage budget to begin with. It's really, really garbage there. I tried. I begged them to give me the 6,000 pounds to get that striker in. Literally begged them. They, ref they refused to budget. It was so ridiculous. 6,000 pounds. That's literally, like, take it out of my wage. I don't care. Something. Ugh. Anyway. So, all that being said... Here's the team we got, and we do have two goalkeepers. Yay! Um, it's a start. McKinney looks like a, a excuse me, a solid backup, so that will be good to have him as a backup. On the left side, we do still have Augusto. That's awesome. Uh, we actually have new guy Jackson Taylor coming in here, 18 year old that my assistant manager thinks is better than Chakuma currently. So he comes in here as a potential guy on the left side. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, center backs. Um, Montgomery, who's our best uh, defensive midfielder, is listed as the best one here. More than likely, we'll be playing Lloyd here. We'll be playing Kenyon. We'll be playing the, the Thomas guy. We'll play some of these other guys. Chukwuma, we might actually play Chukwuma more as a center back, you know, this season. We'll see. Uh, on the right side, McDonald, of course, at front. Billows uh, behind him. Uh, Munts could technically play over there, but we're not worried about him. And new uh, youngster, Lee Marshall, could try to get some game time. We'll see. I don't know if that'll happen. Uh, defensive midfield is our strongest spot. Montgomery, Lloyd, Holder, Munns. That actually Lloyd's not gonna be there, but uh Montgomery Holder Munz, uh that's about it, I guess. <laughs> Come to think of it. I mean Lloyd can play there if we want to do some rotation, and Bills can play there when he's not playing right back. So it is still our strongest spot, even though maybe this won't be exactly how we play it out. But uh we still have some good solid guys there, right? We know Munz can play, we even 
Chai can play when he's feeling good. And then, of course, Mogami picking up that. That's going to be awesome. Uh, left winger, we got Peter still. Uh, Augusto technically could play there, probably won't. Talbot could play over there if we do, too. Uh, new guy, Nifunku, um, as well as Mitchell. Taylor. We got a few guys that can play over there. Nobody amazing, but it's a start. Right wingers, we got probably their best one is Bruno, with Talbot right behind him. Robbie White, obviously James Jones can play over there, things like that. And then, of course, striker, uh, most likely it's going to be Bennett. Um, Peters could play up there if we need him to. Robbie Wright could play up there. Most classic is going to be Bennett and Jones are going to be our two main strikers. Uh, Heskey's in the mix, um, but a couple youngsters as well. So we'll see. Robbie Wright looks good. We'll see if Robbie Wright can turn anything. He's still looking pretty decent. Um, so we'll try to get some of these youngsters in some game time. It worked out for us last year. I basically gave up on the season and then started playing youngsters, and the youngsters started developing and actually, you know, doing some amazing stuff. And you guys we got promoted so <laughs> playing youngsters might actually still be the right move but my guess is we are by far favorites i wouldn't be surprised if we're thousand to one favorites to come right back down again so let's see what the season preview says 250 to one it's not as bad as i thought i mean obviously we don't have anybody in this letter um but i don't even know if we have anybody in this list we uh, we have two people Conquo and augusto are technically make the key player i mean is it is it default we have to have key players or is that actually still people that are halfway decent i actually don't know um lester came down um uh, norwich came down so two pretty tough uh premier level teams are down here with us obviously a bunch of these guys have been in the premier league at one point or time or another uh of course we came up with wigan and barnsley who are also down here very close to relegation favorites bottom three teams get relegated so we just got to be 21st <laughs> i would be shocked if we can make it but again we're gonna get some money for being in the league we have guaranteed money for next year's transfer budget which is going to help a little bit help us come back up again presumably and yet again we have an insanely young squad we have a 29 year old backup goalkeeper who's obviously not gonna be playing that much and then we got this caleb taylor guy at 26 year old everybody else is 23 or under and Tons of potential. Tons of potential. Will these guys actually reach that potential? Don't know. Some of our guys have, right? So Augusto has reached his potential. Chukwumas could get there. McDonald's definitely pushing towards his potential. Lloyd's pushing towards his potential. Mons pushing. There's a lot of guys that are reaching their potential. So if we can get more of those, even with this young squad, we might surprise some people. We'll find out. But that's it. Weird transfer window. Team's not happy, so I have a feeling the first few games are going to be pretty rough. But usually, after a month or two into the season, the team cheers up a bit, even though they're not going to get the collective win bonuses that they were hoping for. So usually, I've I've done that before, like at, in, in dire straits, I've done that a few times. And it has worked out uh, towards the middle, of, you know, you know, early part, middle part of the season. They do eventually forget about it, but it's not great, obviously, to start off the season that way. But... It is what it is. Um, I guess we'll show the Reading game and the Bournemouth game in the next episode. I'm not going to care about the Carabao Cup right now. And that's it. That is where we're at, guys. Um, rough transfer window, but good potential future. If these guys reach half their potential, we will have a team that I think can come right back up again next year if we do get relegated. So we'll see. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.